Hey everyone, we have a special Cape Ann today for you. This is a very time sensitive one because we're talking with the Community Impact Unit. This is a branch of the Gloucester Police Department. They work out of the Browns Mall. Uh, and so they're gonna explain uh, what they are all about. Uh, and the school resource officers, Pizza Terra and Mike Scola, uh, they host SRO Gaming, which you can find on Instagram. They actually have uh, a gaming event tonight at 6 p.m. If you want your child registered, you can just go to Cops and Kids on Facebook and privately message them to get them involved. But anyway, here are Lieutenant Jeremiah Nicastro, Community Navigator Tito Rodriguez, and School Resource Officers Pizza Terra and Mike Scola talking about the CIU and SRO gaming. Enjoy. Uh, thank you, Corey, for hosting this in 1623. Re really appreciate it. And the goal of this um, interview and meeting is to get the word out of the Community Impact Unit and the services that we provide to the community. Uh, let's start off by the Community Impact Unit was created in February, March and March or February of this year under the direction of our Mayor Safathio Romeo Taken and our Chief Ed Conley. And uh, the Health Department, Karen Carroll and Amy Epstein played a huge role in uh, creating this unit as well through um, funding of grants for a community navigator who is Tito Rodriguez, who works in the unit. Um, so with the partnership with the police department, the mayor's office and the health department, this unit was created to improve quality of life issues in our community. And those quality of life issues could be anything from people suffering with uh, substance use disorder, addictions, homelessness, mental health resources, speeding cars, uh, this unit. Um, as a mental health clinician that works part-time. We have a community navigator, Tito, who works full-time. We also have a traffic division. We um, move those speed signs and that message board down on the rotary, different areas of the city uh, to analyze traffic, uh, speeding, tra speeding cars, and where we can target speeding cars mm -hmm. uh, violations. We also receive grants for uh, traffic enforcement Right now we're running a grant for pedestrian crosswalk enforcement. Uh, so people need to make sure they stop for pedestrians in the crosswalks during this busy time of year. Uh, we follow up on a lot of police calls that are uh, repeat calls. Uh, so we, we become like a problem solving unit. Um, when somebody's, uh, when patrolmen are always responding to the same calls over and over and over again, uh, those calls will come over to our office for us to problem solve and resolve any issues that the patrolman can't do because they're responding to other calls. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot. We're, we're based out of Brown's Mall. We have a uh, satellite office. Thank, thank you to the health department for getting us the satellite office through a grant. And uh, the reason why we have a satellite office is it's more community friendly uh, less intimidating to walk into a police station and it's it's a very important asset that we have this and um, you know people uh, feel a lot more comfortable coming into Brown Small and speaking to us and uh, it's an open house for anybody that wants to stop in uh, we have several programs in the community impact unit probably our biggest program that we have is our cops and kids program and um, through that program, our school resource officers have developed an SRO gaming program, which they'll explain. Um, recently, we had a uh, initiative called We Have Your Backpacks. And we received a grant from Addison Gilbert Hospital. Thank you. Um, and we purchased 200 backpacks and we filled those backpacks with toiletries first aid kits, Narcan, um, non-perishable foods, water bottles, uh, Gatorade, anything that you could think of. In those backpacks, we dispersed on July 9th to anybody who is um, in a homeless situation. And we've given out probably 40 to 50 backpacks so far. And come this fall, we're going to have another backpack disbursement and we have uh, additional items to put in the backpacks like winter socks and things like that. So we're dealing with everything from traffic analysis to homelessness to mental health to just about any 
quality of life concerns in the um, in, in in the city, and um, we're not ignorant to the fact of what's going on throughout the country, what happened uh, in the Midwest, and um, it's so important for this unit to strengthen the bond between the community and the police department. And we use several community policing initiatives um, to strengthen that bond. Um, it, it's a, being a police officer right now is not easy. And, and um, we're just trying to, um, you know, maintain a positive relationship with our community through uh, different community initiatives that we have throughout the year. It's a very busy unit, but I'll tell you, I've played many roles in the police department. I've been a detective, a patrolman, a sergeant. There is no work more rewarding than being able to give back to the community in a positive way. And you know what, we're really fortunate to have this unit. Very cool. So do you just want to mention, do the CIU just have normal operating hours? So if the public needs to pop in and, and, and see you guys at the Browns Mall? So the community impact unit is located, like I said, in Browns Mall. When you walk in, we're all the way to the right, first floor, level floor. And uh, we're here Monday through Friday, eight to four. Our office phone number is 978-325-5470. Um, we're in the office during the day, but several times we're stepping out. We do overdose outreaches. Uh, we're on the street a lot, uh, problem solving. So uh, we recommend that people call before they come down or if they're walking on Main Street and just want to stop in and say hello. We have pamphlets for them. We have information that we can give out. Um, you know, we're a clearinghouse for anything that people need in, in the community. Gotcha. Okay. And now do we want to get into the SRO gaming and how that came about? Yeah, why don't, um, why don't we go to Tito and Tito can explain his role in the community and his okay. role in the community impact unit. Gotcha. Hi, I'm Tito Rodriguez. I'm the community navigator. I'm the only civilian on the uh, community impact unit team. Uh, most of my work is really, I'm the connector for people who come in for services, uh, be they them. The bulk of my work is around substance misuse, about 70 to 75 percent of the issues that we, I currently deal with are around substance misuse, and that's the wide range of everything, not just opiates, it's alcohol, benzos. Uh, so I'm the one who tries to connect people for services, and it could be usually a detox, and if they're coming back around aftercare. Uh, from a misuse or addictions perspective, I try to meet an individual where they're at. Uh, there are many pathways for people to change their life and recover and I'll support the pathway of whatever the individual wants to do and I'll try to connect them to them services if it's uh, medication for addictive treatment, if it's uh, 12 steps, movement, if they're into health and wellness, we'll develop a plan around health and wellness. I just try to meet them where they are. I'm in the community a lot. I do a lot of outreach. I work with, uh, actively work with our partners in the community action, the Grace Center, One Stop. Uh, a lot of what we do is also trying to reach out to people who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, sort of it's a safe haven. Many times uh, we're, we're here early in the morning though our operating hours are eight to four. You'll Oftentimes you will find one or two of us here early and many people who are part of the uh, homeless community will come in for a cup of coffee and it's just a safe haven for them, a place to sit down, have a cup of coffee and then go on and that's how, and I'll be able to touch base, see what's going on in their life. You know, uh, we do post overdose visits, we'll do wellness visits. Uh, um, Again, most of the quality of life issues, that's what we try to do. And that's what I try to do. Um, a lot of my work is outreach. Uh, I'm available to the team as well as to the department in general around issues of misuse. And anytime they know how to get me if there's a crisis and I need to respond or I need to assist. Uh, we've been highly successful. Uh, um, 
since we developed back in February, we've had over 400 uh, contacts with people. Uh, and that's quite a bit. That averages about to three to four a day, if you look at it. Uh, I, I mean, we're, we're a work in progress, uh, but it's a good solid team. And uh, uh, we'll do, we we'll try to come up with many creative ideas to serve the community of Gloucester around whatever theme is rising up. Uh, uh, that's it for me. Well, so I, so I was just going to ask, so Tito, are you, is, is the unit like overwhelmed? How has it been managing all this since you seem to be in high demand at so many different angles? Uh, I don't see it as being overwhelmed. I mean, I, I've been doing this for a little bit, so uh, I'm used to it and I got systems and we have connections and stuff, but um, I, I think, you know, as a unit, we're really starting to form and we'll bounce off ideas and suggestions. And uh, what I enjoy about working in the unit is there really are no boundaries. So if I need assistance on something, uh, you know, I can get it and, and it's uh, back and forth. So I, I think the cohesion that we're establishing as a unit allows us to work with the pressures that are coming in. Got it. Okay, nicely put. Um, I, I want to explain one thing. Um, in 2015, the police department obviously changed the whole conversation with the ANGEL program. And that opened up um, several avenues for police uh, to help people suffering from substance use disorder. Uh, we have moved on from the ANGEL program. The ANGEL program was a great first initiative. But um, some of the problems with the ANGEL program was it, um, it suffered from tunnel vision. Um, the ANGEL program helped anybody that had an opiate addiction. And that was a great start. But there's so much more around addiction than just opiates. There might be a mental health problem with the person who's suffering from addiction. There might be a homelessness problem with the person suffering from addiction. So we partnered with the district attorney's office and, and we decided to make more of an outreach program. So no matter what you're addicted to, whether it's drugs, alcohol, um, if you're homeless, we, we take an outreach approach now. We don't wait for people to come to the police station and ask for help just for opiates because opiates is only one piece of the puzzle. Usually when somebody's suffering from opiates, there's underlying, underlying issues as well. And we take all those underlying issues into consideration. And now our, our program um, focuses on outreach. And usually our unit hears about somebody that needs help. And we reach out to them before waiting for them to walk into the police station like the ANGEL program had um, started. So it's more of an outreach based program and it's, it's been very successful. We are very, very, very busy, but we all enjoy the work. Um, I know our office hours are eight to four, but you can email me and I get it almost instantly at jnicastro at gloucester ma.gov. And basically we're on call all the time. Uh, I will say if somebody needs help and they are looking in uh, to get into a detox and our office is closed, feel free to walk into the police station, have a mask on, and the police station will be able to get a hold of us 24 hours a day, seven days a week to help that person. Good. Yeah, I, I just want to give you a, a good example. I mean, part of why I think we've been successful and uh, it's been well well received thus far as our, our collaboration with our partners. And like, like Jeremiah says, we do a lot of outreach and our presence in the community, for instance, people, will re they'll red flag individuals. For instance, I work closely with the Grace Center. And when I do my outreach and I stop in there, they, you know, say they, they put someone on, on our radar screen and say, listen, it's a new person to the community or it could be a long existing individual that says, looks like they're starting off, it looks like they might have relapsed, or it looks like something's going on. And what we'll do is keep in touch, and if it gets to a point where it needs a serious intervention, 
then we get together and try to intervene. It's a real collaborative effort. We have good, good partners in the community. And I mean, that goes to the strength of the community at Gloucester though, because uh, no one's working in a silo. We all know that we each, though we're different agencies, we're, we're here to service the people of Gloucester. And it doesn't matter who gets the credit or whatever. It's about getting someone's services that are appropriate for them. Uh, I also want to add, um, this unit built um, focuses on trust, police legitimacy, and trust in the community. And we want people to know that anybody who is asking for help or comes into our office and she has information, that information stays within our unit. We do not transfer that information to detectives or police, the police department for investigative purposes. That's not what we are here for. If somebody comes to our unit and they have a problem or they're sharing information about somebody else who has a problem, that, you, that information stays here and it's not for police uh, investigative purposes. It's, it's to help the community health. Gotcha. So I really want to give the ultimate credit to our two school resource officers, Pete Sutera and Mike Scola. Um, they are obviously part of the community impact unit. Um, they work um, in the office with us. They help Tito and I with several things, uh, but their main focus is on community policing initiatives. And we all sit in here and we brainstorm about different ideas. And uh, we have a bike program going on now. We have so many other things going on. And our Cops and Kids program is about five years old now, and it's been very, very, very successful. And uh, that Cops and Kids program, we, we send police officers while they're working into schools to have recess with the kids, to have lunch with the kids. We have field days. We have sporting events during school vacations. And when COVID started, all that ended. And we needed to meet kids where they're at and continue those strong relationships that we spent five years building. Um, for instance, I remember our very first visit, uh, Corey, to Beeman School. We walked in there and all the students were freaking out saying, why are the cops here? Why are the cops here? Because kids automatically think something bad happened when they see a police officer in a uniform, because the uniform is intimidating. And usually a child's first experience with a police officer is during a crisis moment, whether it's a 911 call, an arrest, or a car accident. So we wanted children's perception of police officers to improve. So that's why we started the Cops and Kids program. And the next time we went to Beeman School, the kids were like, oh, great, the cops are here again to play with us. So we worked so hard building that relationship and trust with our children in our schools. And then when COVID happened, Officer Suter and Officer Scola thought of other ways to connect with the kids. And I, I'll let, I'll refer to Officer um, Sutera and he can explain what, what he came up with. Basically, Mike and I, um, I'm at O'Malley, Mike's at the high school. We always look for ways for the kids. Same, same situation as cops and kids. We're in the school all day, but it's not like kids are gonna come see us. So basically our goal was to make it so that kids would come and approach us in the schools. Um, so just interactions in general is, is huge. We're not always there because the kid's in trouble. We want kids to come to our office to see us for different things and if they're having trouble in class or, or whatever. We work, we work with the teachers closely and the principals as close as possible. And um, so we basically wanted to come up with something to give the kids to do during vacations. So for winter vacation last year, we did a two day um, street hockey tournament. And um, thanks to Mike Hale and Joe Lacito, along with Principal Beatty, who um, approved it in general, they let us use the O'Malley gym. And um, it was, I couldn't believe the kids that we got. I mean, it turned out to be a crazy event. And unfortunately, it's probably not gonna happen this year, but I wanna keep that going for years to come. So um, we were trying to do that and um, that was a big hit and it got the kids to be our buddies pretty much. I mean, we're not there to, we were there in uh, hockey jerseys. We were there in shorts and sneakers. We weren't there in uniform. We were the referees. We were uh, 
shooting some pucks in between games, just stuff like that, just to make us into real people. Because when a kid sees you even out of school in your regular clothes, they give you like a double take, like, oh my God, this is a real, he's a real guy or with your family or, or whatnot. But um, that is, in my opinion, the goal. Um, so unfortunately we couldn't do that. And Mike and I both play video games, um, obviously when we can, because our, we got a pretty, pretty busy lifestyle after work um, with our families. But so we thought it'd be a good idea since we actually were familiar with Twitch to come up with a way where the kids could watch us play with them and give out prizes. So we didn't know that our first live stream was going to be with a giant news camera here, but <laughs> it was a little nerve wracking with channel four here for our first live action. But I think we've gotten a lot better after that. And the kids are showing up every week. We have, um, I do the little kids playing Roblox and, and Mike, does Fortnite, and he can talk a little bit about that um, after. But we've gotten donations from multiple um, local businesses, from Cafe Bishko to Tootaloo's to 7-Eleven with Slurpees. Um, we're all in this together. I mean, you name it. Uh, along with bigger companies like Target, Walmart, and Walgreens. I mean, they're just the donations coming in from every angle and it's great. I mean, my desk here at the office is uh, like the dentist office when you get the coin after you uh, have a good visit. So the kids come in and, and I open up the, the magic drawer and prizes appear. <laughs> but um, it's been a huge success in my opinion and with the graces of, of Chief Conley and, and Lieutenant Nicastro, we'd like to keep it going. I mean, if the kids are gonna show up every week in the summertime, I mean, I, I think this thing's going to be huge when the months come that more people are going to be inside. Um, and, I, and I think our goal ideally is to host bigger tournaments, get other resource officers to get on board with interactions with the kids like this, because it really does bring you closer together. I mean, kids in fifth grade now are going to come into the middle school and they're going to already, it's going to be like, they know me already. So I think that's huge, but I could go on forever because I, I love it and I'm not having a blast doing it. So, uh, so basically we need to get people to follow our Instagram account, which is SRO underscore gaming. And uh, we reached 500 and right this second, we have 526 followers. We need to get to a thousand so we can get a bigger platform to host bigger tournaments and give away some of our bigger prizes. Um, but I'll let Mike talk now. <laughs> um, first, I want to thank you for hosting us. Um, community Impact Unit really appreciates it. Um, I love being a part of this unit. Of course, my name, I'm, I'm Mike Skoll. I'm the school resource officer at the high school. Um, I've been doing it for a couple of years. Um, I think Lieutenant Nicaster said it best when he said that we are trying to engage our community's youth to show them that Police are more than police, we're real people. Um, some of the things that we have going on, Pete spoke about, uh, we run a after school police academy, which is very successful. We won't be able to do that this year, of course. But Pete and I had um, 20 plus kids last year. We average anywhere from 20 to 40 kids um, in that program. Uh, Another thing that Pete was talking about was the street hockey tournament, huge success. Um, we ran a volleyball tournament, went to vacation just before uh, the building closed down, which was at the high school, and that was a huge success. So, we're, we're, you know, we're coming up with ideas on the fly, um, and we saw that a lot of the engagement with the students was through Zoom. And like Pete said, wow, I, I want to get a Twitch stream going. Pete and I game a lot. Don't let him kid you. He's going to tell you, you know, when we can play, we play a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, we love it, you know, and the kids love it. It's for them to see us, um, not as guys that are gathering intel or standing guard or you know, just there for all the wrong reasons. We're, we're there for all the right reasons. And, and 
I think our, our youth realizes that. And that's through the guidance of, like I said, Lieutenant Nicastro and all the initiatives we have going on here. Um, thankful for the chief for creating this unit. Um, it's so rewarding. I, you know, I, I, my year used to end with graduation. So my rewards ended when all the kids would walk off the field. You know, I felt like a dad for every kid walking off the field. Um, but now I have all summer to do these things and feel rewarded, giving back to the community. Um, there's just, there's so much going on. Like Pete said, I could go on and on and on. Come in and check us out. It's, it's amazing. Um, so the whole idea behind the SRO game is, is to meet kids where they're at. And right now, because of COVID, everybody's isolated. So we're meeting kids through, through gaming. And it's not just about the game. It's not just about um, playing a video game with a cop. It's while they're playing the video game, we're chatting with the kids. They're, they're asking us questions. We've reached probably 500 kids already in, in, in four gaming episodes. It's about um, kids winning small prizes and coming down to the office and meeting the school resource officers to get a $10 Roblox gift card. So it's not just the gaming, it's, it's the positivity behind the gaming and everything that surrounds it. Um, our next gaming event is tomorrow night, which will be tonight, Wednesday, August 5th yep. at 6 p.m. Prior to the gaming, we will go live on Facebook, on um, Facebook, Cops and Kids. Everybody follow Cops and Kids on Facebook. And we have that randomizer wheel, and we're going to be giving out $100 off a KPN Youth Hockey uh, registration. So anybody interested in receiving um, $100 off, enter your kid in by sending Cops and Kids in a private message with your child's name and, and their age. We'll add your child to the name. And before the gaming starts at six o'clock uh, tonight, we will uh, select a winner. And we do it opposite. Instead of spinning the wheel and whoever gets chosen wins, as your name gets chosen, you get eliminated from the wheel and the last person left will win the $100 off the KPN registration. We have so many items in here for um, gaming and for other initiatives. And there are so many people that have donated funds and so many businesses that have donated funds that allowed us to buy Roblox gift cards, V-Bucks, uh, bicycles, um, all kinds of gaming equipment. Um, the group we are all in this together has helped us enormously. And I, I, if I could, Corey, I just want to name off some, some people that have been in businesses that have been awesome and, and really generous in their donations. Nacella Paving, Bank Gloucester, Cape Ann Savings Bank, Sunny's Variety, Richard Caterano, Walmart, Dell Computer donated a laptop for SRO Gaming. 7-Eleven Stores, Two to Lose, Target has donated six bicycles. Sherry's Corner Cafe, Cafe Bishko. Again, we are all in this together. Walgreens, Young Legends Hockey provided a free membership for street hockey and tomorrow night's Cape Ann Youth Hockey. And we really appreciate the donations and all those donations go right back into the community through community police and events uh, like the SRO Gaming. And, um, you know, we're working on a new initiative. It's a uh, bike initiative. And we're looking to give some bikes away to people in need. And, you know, the health department is, is what they're recommending is less people on the bus to go to school this year. So they're promoting more people take bikes. So um, with a lot of these donations, we're going to be purchasing bikes and, and hopefully getting them out to people in need, bikes and, and helmets alike. So again, the Community Impact Unit can be reached by calling 978-325-5470. If somebody is in need and it's an emergency, either call 911 or call the police business line 978-283-1212 if somebody needs detox and they can get a hold of us. 
uh, we're here for the community. We're doing good community police work and uh, we look forward to continuing several, several programs and starting several, several programs. So I thank you for hosting us, Corey. Well said, guys. Appreciate all your work. Thanks for your time. And uh, we'll follow up again sometime down the road to see how the program's going, moving along. Thank you. Like Pops and Kids and follow SRO Gaming on Instagram. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys.